Okay, maybe you can just introduce yourself, give us your name and uh, tell us what you're doing and then maybe explain to us what the goal of this workshop is. Okay, my name is Darko Jordanov, I'm an education advisor uh, working for International Committee of the Red Cross Youth Sector. Um, what we're doing here is part of Exploring Humanitarian Law, which is a program targeting adolescents in order to bring closer the basic rules of international humanitarian law to adolescents. Um, the goal of this objective, uh, the objective of this uh, exercise is actually to bring closer this group of uh, 40 young students from throughout, uh, I, I think there are 38 schools, uh, international schools present here. So they're going through the through the process of uh, being introduced to humanitarian law and then they're trying on the ground of this experience and on the ground of their life experience, they're trying to create a non-verbal drama performance in order to uh, recreate their own experience. Yeah, basically, so that's it. Maybe you can work us through the different steps uh, because this is, uh, from what I understand, it's a four-hour workshop. So what are the different steps that you've been taking? Yes, we started with, with an exercise uh, which was actually a challenge. So the 40 students, group of 40 students which uh, hardly knew each other from before, they had to overcome an obstacle. And in order to do that they had to cooperate and they had to really break the barrier because most of them they didn't believe that they, are, they will be able to do it actually. So this is very important because it explains the heart of what we are trying to do. Because at the end after being introduced to basic rules of uh, humanitarian law and creating something together, the idea is that they're going to be mobilized for humanitarian action, but really on a voluntary basis. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this f first initial exercise is crucial, it's very important. Then we have a block of exercises which leads them through the humanitarian law, the rationale f of humanitarian law and the basic rules. And now what we're doing is they're, they're learning basic techniques of uh, non-verbal drama performance. So at the end, in the last hour of this workshop, they're going to put these two together. So their knowledge on humanitarian law and with the techniques on non-verbal drama, they're going to present their own story. They're going to create a story and they're going to tell it without words. Can you tell us just very concretely which exercise is followed by which exercise? What are the different exercises, mm -hmm. but in concrete terms? Yes, yes. So the first is 220 volts. It's uh, the challenging exercise that we started with. Then we are going through um, um, analysis of a story, a real life story, which is called Brave Vendor. Then um, they're creating their rules. They, they, then they did a blindfolded captive. So basically they're recreating a, a photograph photo from uh, conflict real life photo you can you can you can see the photo as well with their own bodies and and on the ground of this experience then they're creating a list of their own rules for war then they're given a list of existing rules and they have to per compare these two lists afterwards we had a very good discussion debate actually on um, rationale of war and uh, sanctions and violations, sanctioning the violations. After that, actually, we now we are doing the story. Uh, then we're going to do the machine, which is how to create a story and how to create a machine, human machine, which uh, we'll use later in order to tell the story of these kids. They will have to tell their own story at the end. And what is the rationale for using nonverbal mm -hmm. drama? in these exercises? Yes, uh, but we're using non-verbal drama because of a couple of reasons. One of them is because many of them are coming from different language background, so we want them to be more or less equal. And then uh, also for the audience, because uh, this is intended, international humanitarian law is universal. So uh, we are trying to address actually a public which is much wider than English-speaking community. So that's one of the reasons, but uh, there is an, another underpinning reason for it, and that is that actually we are trying to address the the level the level or layer of uh, emotions of humanity, not simply. And sometimes words words might be deceiving. Uh, yeah. So you are trying to engage the emotions. Yes. 
of the students. Is that the reason why you're choosing nonverbal drama yes. as a technique? Yes. The drama as such is, is based on, on their um, individual experience of the world, but also they have to act together. So, you know, it's really, everything is in there. Okay, so maybe what you're saying is that uh, international humanitarian law can appear very dry, but if you are able to engage the emotions of the young people, then they will remember better what it's about? I think that you said it much better than me. I cannot but agree. No, no, but it was a, um, there is a, an answer inherent, and that's true, because we are really trying to end with the mobilization of the young people for, for action. But it can be done only on a voluntary basis, so they can do it by themselves, or they, they shouldn't do it at all. So they're not doing this for ICRC, Red Cross, the older generation. It, they're doing it because they see a logic in it. I mean, maybe you were able to, to catch the discussion, but it was, I was, really, I, I, I remain without comments on, on the discussion. That, that, but now I will really have to run, they're waiting for me. <laughs> Sorry, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay.